Hey everybody, it's Connor. Uh, I'm coming at you from a new format, video format this week. I wanted to try something else, see if this was a little more um, interactive and a little more personal. So I figured, you know, try something out. I'm also still going to post the transcription on the That First Step blog page as we've been doing. Essentially, I'm just going to be reading what I wrote. So uh, whether you choose to read it, whether you choose to listen, that's up to you. But uh, I figured it'd be a little more personal. See if this is something that catches on. Uh, so we'll see. So today my article was Pain Heals, Chick Stig Scars, and Glory Lasts Forever. Now that comes from the movie The Replacements, which is one of my favorite movies. It's, one, it's a football comedy movie, and um, I recommend it to anybody. And uh, Keanu Reeves says this. He's the quarterback at the very end trying to rally the team together, and uh, it's, it, it's a lot of fun. But there's a reason why I chose that quote, and I think you'll get the idea of it once we get into this. So as most of you know, my main focus has been on my physical wellness alongside my mindfulness. Frankly, as much as I've been putting into this challenge, I've recently felt like it hasn't been enough. So once again, I'm making some changes to hopefully better improve my efforts. Ever since I really started actively looking into my fitness and diet last summer, I've seen advertisements for V-Shred. Big Brother's always watching. V-Shred is another one of those programs that promises results if you stick to their fitness and diet program. They also offer a number of supplements and a whole lot of other things for support. After months of clicking skip ad and trying to just, you know, scroll past it, I finally decided to look into it more. After some further research and long thought, I enrolled into the V-Shred Get Ripped 90 Day program. I want to add another level of accountability to myself while also receiving a little more guidance in my efforts. For those who are unaware of how it works, you create an account and you can access your program online either on your computer and or on your smartphone. Also they have workouts which adjust to whether you're able to go to the gym or if you're doing a home workout. I pretty much rarely leave the house unless it's for errands anymore because pandemic sucks and winter sucks and everything. I digress. Okay. So with that logic, my plan is geared around more calisthenics, kind of like what I've been doing already, but on crack. <laughs> I've only been on the program since Monday, but I can tell you that it is kicking my ass. <laughs> I started off my workouts the same way that I did before with all these different stretches and a light jog or a bunch of jumping jacks. Then I get into whatever the program tells me to do for the day. What is really helpful is that there are instructional videos that go along with each exercise to help you do it correctly. Now, I've known or at least heard of most of these exercises, but I appreciate having the visual and verbal instruction to ensure that I'm not going to hurt myself like I did at the beginning of that first step. Let me tell you guys, these workouts are a lot, at least for me. Everything that I've been doing for the past two months did not prepare me for this. The program is expecting much more sets and reps than I was doing, and it's getting much more to the core of the strength training rather than my passive technique. Again, I never said that my technique was great. I was just figuring it out as I was going along. But holy cow, this is beating me up. But in a good way, in a good way. Yeah, I may have you know cried a little today during my workout, but I did my best to push through. It's obvious to see that I'm not to the point where I can do all the sets and reps easily. I'm not to the point that I want to be by now. I'll admit, I struggle with a lot. I, I find myself inadvertently cheating at times and needing a second to catch my breath or relieve my muscles. I've honestly fallen on my face or on my back several times now from arms or legs just giving out on me. Again, I'm not looking to kill myself with this, but it's clear I'm not doing enough, or at least I wasn't doing enough prior. Now, how does this tie into my mental health and wellness? It's about time. And I talk a little bit about this concept on Walsh Wednesday this week, so I recommend hopping over there at some point. Recently, time has not been my own. As many of you know by now, I used to be the caregiver for my grandmother before I was able to move her into an assisted living facility. Since moving her in, I don't have to be there every day anymore. 
but I still do her errands, sort a lot of the paperwork, and take her to doctor's appointments. Most of the time, it's gotten pretty easy to balance. That is when hell isn't freezing over and we're not getting bombarded with snowstorm after snowstorm every other stinking day. If you haven't noticed, I despise the winter. <laughs> one storm doesn't equal one snow day for me. It takes me about two or three days to catch up. With these storms, I'm reorganizing my schedule and I've been rescheduling all these appointments for my grandmother and trying to keep that under control. Besides that, my uncle and cousin recently were diagnosed with COVID. Fortunately, they're doing much better and on the mend. But I stepped up and would do medicine and grocery runs for them. On top of that, I would go down to help my mom with errands and various chores at her parents' house where she is the caregiver for them. I've done groceries, I've shoveled, I've laid salt, and I've done more than that. Now, I don't mind doing this stuff for my family, but some days I'm driving all over Poughkeepsie to then drive all over Fishkill to then drive all over Pokewig and Beekman. And on top of that, I'm trying to run Walsh Wednesday, that first step, general freelancing jobs, and a few other few soon-to-be-announced projects and still take care of the house. You know, I'm the primary cook for my family, and a lot of nights right after dinner, I'm running off to some project or online appointment, and the dishes pile up, which, you know, it gets intimidating. All of this takes so much time. I'm doing my best to balance as much as I can, but a number of things are falling to the wayside. In regard to Walsh Wednesday, I don't get to sit down and edit those until 8 or 9 p.m. Tuesday night before it's supposed to be up around midnight. I haven't been able to dedicate much time to other behind the scenes projects that require my time. The dishes continue to pile up. And that first step starts looking like an unessential thing that I can take off my plate to leave room for other things. Since I don't technically have a nine to five job and I make my own schedule, I've become the go-to person for a lot of situations. That being said, I'm kind of getting stretched thin and my personal responsibilities are falling through. There are a number of days recently I haven't been able to do any of my work, and it's piling up. Some days it's getting daunting, and I feel like I'm accomplishing nothing. Once again, that's why I'm doing that first step. It's not just for the goal of working out and meditating, but it's for the goal of my physical and mental wellness. That applies to all facets of my life, and that is why I stay true and accountable for all this. Regardless of the chaos surrounding me, focusing on me is a priority, and I must keep it that way. In regard to my physical wellness, it takes up so much time to dedicate to all that I should be doing. Exercising takes about an hour and a half. Preparing, cooking, and eating all my meals takes at least another hour per meal. Heck, even getting ready for the day takes me another hour. So if I'm supposed to get about you know, the proper eight to nine hours of sleep, and I'm up for 15 hours a day. According to that logic, with all that I listed, there goes about five and a half hours, and that's if I'm timely about things. Put that on top of all the other chores and errands that I've been doing to keep everything else afloat. Trying to fit in any of my own work is really daunting. Some of y'all may say I have the first obligation to me, and that I come first, and that I should leave it to others to stand up. Unfortunately, everyone else is hindered, handicapped, and busy with something else. There is no one else. Everyone already has so much on their plate. So me being young and expendable, I come in handy in a number of situations. It's tiring. But one thing I can do is really analyze and understand my schedule. Some days are going to be crazier than others. Some days will have few unexpected twists and turns. I can't plan for every possible variable, but I need to block out the time to get things done. I gotta say, okay, I can make that happen, but I also need to prioritize this, or something along those lines. There are only so many hours in a day, but I have to live with the thought that I have many days to accomplish this all in. Should everything go well and nothing horrific happen, I should hopefully have a long life to fill all these things. Rome was not built in a day. I should not pick at myself for not being further along. I need to give myself credit for the things that I am doing. Mindfulness is more than spending 20 minutes a day meditating. It's about taking that awareness and stability into my everyday life. 
I hate that feeling of falling behind. Hence why it is so important to find ways to chisel at things a little each day, regardless of how difficult that is. I'm one of those people where I work until it is done. However, many of the things I want to do cannot be completed in just one sitting. Hence why if I keep chiseling away at things a little each day, whether that be exercise, Walsh Wednesday, or other projects, I'll be amazed at where I am to go in no time. That being said, I still have a few more things that I need to try to get done tonight. So much love to all you guys. Keep stepping.